everybody. Uh, my name is Todd Cochran, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about growing your audience organically. And it kind of sounds like a weird title. Or, no, we're not going to be growing any produce or anything like that. But as a way of introduction, uh, my name is Todd Cochran. I'm the CEO and founder of Blueberry Podcasting. I am an active podcaster. I've been podcasting now for 16 plus years. I started my first show in October 2004. It's a show I still do. It's called the Geek New Central Podcast. I also do a show. It's called the New Media Show at newmediashow.com. I do that with a co-host, uh, Rob Greenley from Libsyn. So you got two competitors to do a podcast together. And then, of course, I do a podcast for Blueberry Podcasting, which is called uh, Podcasting Insider. So today, really, what I'm going to be sharing with you is kind of something I've been sharing for a long time. And it's really basic steps that you can utilize really to grow your show. Now, I'm not going to try to kill you by death by PowerPoint uh, too much. But I do have some slides and some notes, and we're going to go through this information. And I hope that you'll be able to have some takeaways here to help grow your audience. And this is really what it's about. You know, the number one question I get asked anytime I meet with a podcaster is how do I grow my show? And my focus today is really to help you grow your show and and basically in things that you're already doing in, in not having to do a lot of extra work. And I'm gonna try to give you some simple steps here, the takeaways, I'm not gonna feed you 30 things because I could, I'm gonna probably feed you a half dozen and and I think when you get done with the session, some of you are going to really have some actionable items to take away from this. So let me go ahead and flip to the side deck. And again, uh, I'm Todd Cochran. Uh, Todd at Blueberry.com is the email address. You can uh, very simply, uh, Blueberry is spelt without the E's. We couldn't afford the E's. So that's what it's kind of about. It's a little running joke here. But the first thing we're going to talk about is where are you? Where is you as a podcaster building your brand? Are, are you building your brand on your own website or are you doing it on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or are you doing this on your podcast host website? You know, wh where, where are you building your brand? And this is really an important distinction because the, the first and the last item have major impacts to how your show is going to be, how it's going to grow and how it's going to be perceived. And we'll talk about the other items as well, because we know that sometimes audiences are hanging on Instagram, you know, maybe your audience is on Twitter, Facebook. These are all great places to help grow your show. But where are you building your brand? You know, where you build your brand really, really, really does matter. And, and I think and, and I'll say it really for maybe the one millionth time, you need your own website. You truly, truly do need your own website. You need, you need your own .com. And I'm going to go into why you need your .com in, in much more deeper detail here. But it really boils down to is Google. Google search is the number one way that podcasts are discovered today. And it used to be word of mouth. It used to be my audience members would tell their audience members. That's probably still number two. But today, when people are looking for content, they go to Google and maybe sometimes Bing and some of those other search engines. But the question I always ask when I go look and I do a consult with podcasters, I go to their website. I Finding the show via Google search is, you know, that's, that's easy. This, you know, if they search for your show name, that should come up number one, number two in the search results. But are your episode titles descriptive? You know, is your episode title something that someone's going to search for? Do you reinforce your episode title in the first paragraph of your show notes? And really what you can do there is go to your current show right now. Take a show that's been on the street for seven days. Take the exact title or a subset of your title and search for it on Google and find out if that episode comes up towards the top of the search results. And really what is this is all about is about winning the episode search game, not the show title name. It's about winning the episode search title. And are you getting backlinks? You're doing these great interviews. You're talking to lots of people. Are they linking back to your website? Are they sending traffic back to you? 
I demand it. And I think you should too. But having your own website allows you to control SEO, build your brand, control your intellectual property. Site traffic is not impacted. And you can build it almost anywhere on WordPress, Squarespace. There's lots of places to build your website. But why do I say site traffic is not impacted? And that's really kind of a critical thing here. Site traffic is often, um, well, Google uses about 800 signals to rank where your, show, your site's going to be found and whether or not specific episodes are going to be found. Now, we all can't play the SEO game completely, but we can give ourselves a leg up. If you have your show hosted at yourhostingprovider.com forward slash or your show name dot your hosting provider, what really happens there is Google assumes that you're part of that group and they look across all those pages at your hosting provider. And basically, there comes up with a, a score for that website, which independently will affect your episode page rankings because you're part of this big conglomerate of shows. You're intermixed with, we've seen shows that are sex shows. We've seen shows that are maybe borderline on speech, all intermixed in the stack. And Google does a ranking. And ultimately, you may not even know why you've been drawn down on the search results because potentially something on your hosting provider's provided website and the others associated with it are really going to basically draw you down. Having your own .com on your own website where you're not affected by anyone else except what you do to build your brand and grow your authority to Google is really going to be that just that, it's on you to be able to write good show notes and everything that goes along with it. I always tell podcasters, you record your podcast for audience, you write your show notes for Google or Bing. And I can't stress this enough, how important this actual title of this, of what it says on this slide. Because when you write your show notes, Again, you want to be able to think as if someone was searching for your topic of your episode. And you have to really think about these title episodes. I don't get it right all the time, but I work really, really hard at it. And I'm going to demonstrate that here in a second. Most podcasters say, oh, I've got a discovery problem. No one can find my show. Well, you don't have a podcast discovery problem. But many have a podcast search problem. And again, with Google being the number one discovery method of podcast today, if you're not doing things that help you get your show discovered, you're really in trouble here. So what I want to show you next is my own site, my personal site. I'm going to show you a, a couple of pages and where I ranked out um, for the search engine results. And I'm waiting for my system here there it goes we'll be able to update so i can show you the screen so on the left is i've got a title of a episode i recorded in march it says google incognito lawsuit to advance up in the top right you'll see i did a google search google incognito lawsuit to advance and where was i in that search results number one Number two, number three, and who was above me? The Verge and Ars Technica. Now, if you know anything about tech sites, those are monster websites, and I would expect not to rank ahead of them in those search results, but I was number three. That's really, really awesome. And that page, over time, will drive probably thousands of hits to the page. Just based upon people searching for the Google incognito lawsuit that's going on here in America. So it may not be something someone's going to search for in Australia, but it's something that's going to be searched for here. My website today gets between 20 and 200,000 hits a day from search traffic alone. Now, 
what do you think that results over time and new subscribers to my podcast? It, it really results in a lot of new new listeners because a percentage of a percentage, it's not it's one or two, you know, like one of uh, one half of one percent will actually subscribe and stay subscribed to the show. And over time, that's a huge number. Now, it's a numbers game. But what you're really trying to do here is drive traffic to your website, make people interested in your content. And if you have niche content, it's going to even be more powerful. Now, every once in a while, I hit the lottery. And this is an article that I published on March 1st. And it was about Verizon. Verizon here in the United States is a major mobile carrier. Verizon said to turn off 5G to save battery life. Well, I ended up as a snippet. And that snippet is at the very top of the search results right below the, the, the an advertisement by, guess who? <laughs> Verizon. Um, or no, Verizon battery replacement. But still, what's going to ultimately happen here is that link there will drive an incredible amount of traffic to the website. They get to the page. And if you notice my website, I have subscribed to the podcast right in the top right-hand corner. Every page, I got 15,000 pages on my website, and every one of the pages has the ability to subscribe. Many times I come to your websites during consults, and guess what I can't find? I can't even find how to subscribe to your show. If you are a podcaster and you're building a podcast audience and you care about having people subscribe and follow to your show, you better have prominently on your website where people can subscribe. Don't hide it on page three because they're never going to get there. If you look at just Google Analytics, not your podcast analytics, you'll see that people don't stay very long oftentimes when they hit your website. They have a few seconds. And if you basically can, if the, at a glance, they can say, oh, my gosh, this guy's a or lady is a podcaster. He's got a podcast. He talks about tech or he talks about business or whatever it may be. Then you are going to gain a listener. They may not stay a listener. That's up to your job to record for your audience. You write for Google. But I give my audience every opportunity to subscribe to the show. And what, what, what do I do? You know, this is, again, my personal website. And here's a podcast post. My player on my website, obviously, is my Blueberry. But, you know, most of you have a player from whoever's hosting your podcast. Right below the player is subscribe links. There's actually subscribe functions right on the player. And I do audio and video podcasts. And that's a whole nother topic that we could probably spend an hour on. But again, they can subscribe to the podcast. I give them every opportunity to not miss that. If you don't have a website and you don't have control over that website and you don't con control of your brand and you are limited by what you put on your website, by what your hosting provider allows for you, you may not be able to even implement some of the stuff I'm talking about today. And more, and sadly, some of you have got a web page on your hosting provider and a dot com, and Google can't figure out who is the authority, and you have duplicate content on both sites. One site for having the master. You you want Google to know who and where your site originates. So most hosting providers want that traffic to come over to them. So, oh, I'm over at such and such hosting because it gives them the opportunity subtly to market to the people that come to the website. I don't want to market for my podcast host. I want to market for my show. So again, I've been talking about this for many, many, many years. This is nothing new. And we kind of call it the blueberry way. It's about and again, you don't have to host with Blueberry, but have your own website, build your own brand, control your IP. And then more importantly, all this work you're doing with your shows and the people that you're interviewing and talking to, guess what you want them to do? Backlink. So what's a backlink? Backlink is simple. 
A backlink is when they link back to you from their website or social platform or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Backlinking builds authority. Google loves backlinking. They love when someone of authority backlinks to another site. And I'll give you a, a, a case study, not a case study, which is something that happened to me. When I started my show, I started going to the Consumer Electronics Show to get extra content from my audience. And while I was there, I was one of three or four media teams that went in and was able to uh, do an interview the first year the GoPro launched. Got in with the SEO, a CEO, sat down with him, had a long interview. We actually put up two or three videos on GoPro that year from that interview alone. And then as we were doing that packaging of that content, getting ready to put that on the website, I was talking with him, his PR team, with his marketing team, and pumping up that this podcast episode was going to be on the street. I provided the links. I provided a preview of the content, allowed them to put input. Here's a funny thing. Leaders to companies, CFOs, CTOs, CEOs, CIOs, product leads, when you really give them, pump them up, there's a little bit of an ego effect that goes on. And when an ego effect goes on, what ends up happening is they say, PR team, make sure you link to that article from the website. Imagine getting an authoritative link from back from GoPro to your website, which my site was a tech site. And Google says, oh my God, GoPro linked to Todd, a, a podcaster, geeknewscentral.com. They, you know, they have no clue. And all of a sudden, guess who my site traffic goes up. So that authority link back. Now, you don't want bad links either. So you got to be careful because some people will sell back links as part of a service, SEO, black hatting service. That can get you in a lot of trouble too. So bad backlinks can hurt you just as good as good backlinks. So try to figure out where that backlink is going to be placed to come to your website. Another thing you can do is very, very simple. Maybe it's time to join a network or, or, or build a network. Being part of a network can help bad backlinks. We built the Tech Podcast Network. Everyone had their own websites. And guess what we did? We linked back and forth to each other. If Kevin Smith did a, and he was one of the guys I really liked as a podcaster, he did a show. If, if he put an article, I linked to it, he linked to me. And imagine a hundred different podcasting sites cross-linking all the time on every episode to partner podcast pages, everyone helps each other rise to the top. And this is where these networks that have content creation teams and they spend big money, which the majority of us don't have, where they have an advantage because they use successful shows to promote other shows. And they do that with linking and, of course, promoting in the show, cross-promotion, all that stuff that goes on. It's a form of backlinking, and it builds a network. The audience hears it here. They go listen there. So being part of a well-formed network has value. You don't have to be part of a network that has 100 shows. I would say get together with 10 of the shows that you love the most and say, hey, let's talk about each other. And let's build backlinks with like-minded shows. We are doing tech shows. You think, oh my God, I'm gonna lose part of my audience because I'm linking to this other tech show. No, 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 we horse traded. We traded audience members. And you know, sometimes people get sick and tired of listening to you. My show's been on 16 years, 1500 plus episodes. People get sick of listening to you and they go listen somewhere else. Well, if you've recommended three or four shows to go listen to and they go over there and they're over there a couple of years and guess what? They get sick of him or her. And they said, oh, I'm going to go back and listen to Todd because he's still talking about Todd's show. So this, this cross-linking, cross-promotion is like, it's, it's money in the bank. But I do want to remind you of one thing as well. Having a website comes with the responsibility of being mobile first. You have to be mobile first. It is super, super critical. And you can test if your website's mobile first by just taking a desktop browser squeezing it down as tight as it go and look at your website, loading your website on your own mobile phone. Are you mobile first? And Google has some great tools for you to test your website to see how well you're doing. And there's, there's several uh, tools out there. The one thing I like the best is something called Page Insights. I think I've got that coming up 
here in a second. But mobile first is how Google now ranks websites. They, they know that everyone's on a mobile phone. So mobile first is Google's key to search. If you're not mobile search ready on your website, and most web templates today from most providers are mobile ready, and it's real easy to test. Again, make sure you are mobile ready. And then you need to make sure that you have fast page loads. And this is another thing that happens that is never talked about by other hosting providers. When, when I took my team uh, four or five years ago, and we decided to offer free WordPress sites to all of our hosting customers. I said, the number one thing is that these pages have to be lightning fast. They can't be sluggish. They can't be slow. They have to load fast. They have to be mean and lean because guess what Google does? Google takes a very strict look at how fast your page loads and they give you a score. And a bad score means a bad page rank. Now, actually, I've had a, a person come in and start working on my website a little bit because this is my personal website. I don't get it perfect. I end up having a 79 for a mobile score and a 98 for desktop. So you can do this. You can run this. It's called Page Speed Insights. You can Google that. It'll load this page. You can type. You can paste in your website URL. And you can test your page speed load for mobile and for your desktop. My desktop came out 98. You can, that's just incredible. You can't, that's, that's, that's a moneymaker. But Google ranks page site ranking on mobile. So, okay, I got a fast desktop load. No one cares. Google doesn't care. They care about that 79. So my goal was to get that 90 and above, and we're working on that right now. At one time, it was 90, but I made a couple of changes to the website. Things are loading a little slower. So this is where maybe you're not maybe not geeky enough to do this, but I've hired people to work on my website for relatively inexpensive money that know what they're doing to get this page speed test up much higher. And it really is super, super critical in helping determine your rank. Google's now, um, in May, they've got some new things coming out. Google's always changing the game, so it's very hard to keep up with it. And, and, and even me, I don't know what's happening, but they are going to be looking at original content on websites in a much more authoritative way. If you have original content, which all podcasters are doing, you're not regurgitating a press release. If you're actually writing a good description of your show, providing some outbound links, you're going to be set up for success for the upcoming changes that Google's making to search in May. And not only that, because we have Google Podcasts now and Google's in the game, I'm starting to see my episodes, when, when my episode ranks high, I actually see the episode player in the Google search results. I will see maybe two or three competing episodes that have covered from other shows that have covered the same content. But I'm now starting to see where people can play my show, my episode, right from a search result on an episode. Now, most of us will be able to win this game when you search for your show name, right? That's, that's an easy one. You know, that you should be number one in search results for your podcast name. If you're not number one, oh, that's a big problem. It, but if you are number one, which you should be, it should be easy. Search your title of your podcast. And if you've had any work whatsoever done on your website, you should be number one. You don't want to be Apple to become number one. You don't want Spotify results to be number one. You want your website to be number one. Because I've always said I want listeners to come back to Moonbase Alpha. Moonbase Alpha is Geek News Central or the new media show or podcastinsider.com. I want them to come back to the main page, know that the content lives there, know the show lives there, know that if I'm ever for some unknown reason shadow banned, they can come back to the website and still get the show. That's going to be a rare occurrence that that's going to happen. But what we're really trying to do here is win the Google search game. And if you do not have a website of your own, 
and people have told you, oh, you don't need your own website. Well, great for content creators that have content like yours that do. This is, I can't talk about how important this is because podcasting is building a great audience is a large number of variables. It's not just recording your show. It's doing all the social stuff. It's doing the promotion when you hit episode 100 to call the local news station and say, hey, I just hit episode 100 on my show. Would you come over and do a human interest story on my podcast? Television's always, at least in America, and most television stations are looking for Phil. And your, your two-minute story, which they spent an hour at your house recording, could be that two-minute human interest story called the newspapers, you know, this, all this stuff that you can do. And I'm sure people have told you about writing a book. You know, there's just these whole plethora of things you do to grow your podcast. But if they can't find you, if they can't find your episodes, if it's on a slow loading page over on your hosting provider, or worse yet, you have bought a very inexpensive hosting plan for your.com and you're on a server with 800 other websites that can be a factor too so invest a little bit of money in your website pick a web host that has a good reputation to make sure and you know if you have to spend some dollars understand this is an investment in your show and an investment in audience growth it's it's really really not that complicated People are spending a lot of money on editors. They're spending a lot of money on transcripts. You know, all these things they're spending money on, but they're not spending money on their most important asset is their website, which has their RSS feed, which is part of their IP. Many of you don't even have control of your RSS feed. Your hosting provider does. That is your radio tower. That is that is the essence. So, you know, I can come here and talk about the the utilization of PowerPress. There's lots of plugins out there for podcasting. There's lots of web hosts that support podcasting as well. So I'm not trying to sell Blueberry products and services. I'm just telling you the things here that you can do to make your show grow. And there's a couple of tools too that you can use on a periodic basis. And just full disclosure here, uh, there are tools that Blueberry offers. Um, but again, and it's, they're free to use. They work on any feed from any any hosting provider. Um, CastFeed Validator, castfeedvalidator.com. Test your feed validity once in a while. Sleep well knowing your feed is validated. Fix issues before they arise. I don't use this every time I publish an episode, but every couple of weeks I go over there and and double check and make sure that my that my show is uh um you know it doesn't have, the the feed doesn't have any errors in it. Um, so that's, you know, some things we do. But again, my purpose today in presenting this the way I did is I just want you to understand that you record your podcast for your audience, you write your show notes for Google, write a great episode title, write a great first paragraph to back up that episode, have some outbound links to things that you've talked about during the show, some reference points. It's like providing reference material on a term paper and Make sure you get those backlinks that come in from the people that you have interviewed. These very basic steps will help you probably more than 80% of podcasters are doing today. And also making it easy for them to subscribe when they hit your landing page. People spend a lot of money on this, making a beautiful template for their website. It's got big graphics on it and everything. And you can't even tell the person's a podcaster and you can't even figure out how to subscribe. So sometimes simpler is just a little bit better. I don't use a real complicated because again, this is about new listener discovery. The people that are listening to show already know where your show resides. They know to come back to your website for whatever additional content. And I encourage you to blog additional content that's on podcast content to feed the Google beast on a periodic basis with additional information. Because you can then, it doesn't even have to have covered in the show. You've created a new post that drives people to the website that then they can see that you can they can subscribe. And it's all part of this cycle of 
new listeners in. Listeners are tired of listening to going out and you keep your audience growing. And because believe me, people do get sick of you and they will leave at some point. So this is the basis of my presentation today. You can reach me, Todd at blueberry.com. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Geek News. Of course, the company's Twitter account is at Blueberry. Blueberry, so I didn't even pronounce it myself. Uh, but uh, I want to thank the Pod Fiesta Summit team for allowing me to present today. I hope you got something out of this. Again, drop me an email, Todd at Blueberry.com. Uh, if you're a Blueberry customer, we do consults, free consults for all our podcasters as well. You can arrange one of those. But with that, I'm going to send it back to the Pod Fiesta team. Uh, again, congratulations for this uh, summit and uh, everyone have a great, great time. And I'm sure you're going to be drinking from the fire hose today with all the great content being presented.